So I've just told you that correlation does not imply causation. You've probably heard this several times before, but what does imply causation? So if we're doing causal inference, we have to answer this question. And that's what this section will be about. We're going to say a way to get causation. How can we know that something causes something else? How can we estimate how much of an effect does something have on something else? To do that, I'll have to introduce a new concept known as potential outcomes, which is something that is unique to causal inference. You wouldn't have seen it in regular statistics or something else before. And I'll start with just the motivation for this. So, you know, keep in mind the context is that we're inferring the effect of some treatment on some outcome. And say that in this example, you have a headache. And you know that if you were to take a pill, your headache would go away. And say that you also know that if you were to not take a pill, you would still have your headache. If you know these two things, you can probably say that there is a causal effect of the pill on your headache. The pill makes your headache go away. But what if, when you are to not take the pill, your headache still goes away? So your headache goes away regardless of whether or not you take the pill. And you might say that the pill does not have any causal effect. Maybe it's just a sugar pill. So this is the intuition for potential outcomes. And we'll now get a bit more precise with specific notation for this. We'll use do t equals 1 to denote taking the pill. And we'll use do t equals 0 to denote not taking the pill. The outcome that you would observe if you were to take the pill is this first one. And the outcome that you would observe if you were to not take the pill is the second one. We'll use simpler notation for this. So just yi1 as the potential outcome if you were to take the pill, and yi0 as the potential outcome if you were to not take the pill. And then we can define the causal effect as just the difference between these two potential outcomes. So the causal effect of taking the pill on your headache is just this difference between potential outcomes. So I think it's worth taking some time to make sure that sinks in and that you understand this because potential outcomes are a new concept. This notation is a new notation that you wouldn't have seen before if you haven't seen causal inference before. However, there is a fundamental problem here. So say that yi1 equals 1. So that means that if we're to take the pill, then headache goes away. And yi0 equals 0, which means that if you're to not take the pill, you would still have your headache. So 1 means headache, 0 means not headache. The fundamental problem here is that, say you were to not take the pill, you can't actually observe what would have happened if you were to take the pill. We'll call that a counterfactual. And because you can't observe that, you can't compute this causal effect. Similarly, if you were to take the pill, you can't observe what would have happened if you were to not take the pill. And same as last time, you will not be able to compute this causal effect because you only have access to one of the terms in this difference. This is known as the fundamental problem of causal inference. So we'll denote that difference we we're just looking at as the individual treatment effect because there's a specific I, where I stands for a specific individual. But how can we get around this? Maybe we can take an average of this. So if we take an average over I, um, you, know, you can use linearity of expectation to get this equation. And then you would like that this difference between potential outcomes is equal to a difference between conditional expectations. But unfortunately, in general, it is not. And this is because correlation does not imply causation, right? So because we have this confounding association here. And 
these conditional expectations are just a measure of association. This first quantity is a causal quantity, but the second quantity is not causal. It is a mixture of, say, the confounding association and the causal association. And this is mainly the case because we have confounding. When we have confounding, then these two quantities are not equal to each other. We can't just look at the difference between conditional expectations. Well, what if there were no arrow going from C to T? What if C were not a cause of treatment? Then we wouldn't have any confounding association. It'd be fantastic. And it turns out that's exactly what randomized control trials do. So a randomized control trial is where an experimenter randomizes subjects into a treatment group or a control group. And the way that they choose which group a specific subject is in is by, say, a coin flip, just some random number generator. That means that T, your treatment, is only determined by a coin flip. It can't have any causal parents. It's completely random. Another way of viewing that is that the treatment groups must be comparable. So if you think back to the shoe sleeper example and waking up with a headache and drinking, the problem there is that the shoe sleepers were not comparable to the non-shoe sleepers because most of the shoe sleepers were drinking the night before, whereas most of the non-shoe sleepers were not. But if you were to randomize whether someone wears shoes or not when they are going to bed, so say you went into their rooms, you get these drunk people, you flip a coin for whether or not you're going to take their shoes off, or you get these sober people and you flip a coin for whether or not you're going to sneakily put shoes on them or not while they're sleeping, then what that would do, it was it would make the drunk people evenly distributed across the two groups, across the ones that have shoes on when they're sleeping and the ones that don't have shoes on. Then the groups are comparable. Okay, so randomization here makes the groups comparable. Comparable groups is good because then you can get causal effects. And so that's what this says right here. When there is no confounding, the ADE, the average treatment effect, is equal to the difference in conditional expectations. Okay, so at the top of the side, we have the in general, these are not equal. But at the bottom, we have that when there is no confounding, such as when you do a randomized control trial, then they are equal. You know, randomization is sort of magical in the sense when you can do an experiment, causal inference is easy. Even for any other variable, so, so here we just have C, but if there's any other variables that we don't observe, randomization will also take care of those variables. They can't be causes of T. T can't have any causal parents because it's just determined by a coin flip. Randomization takes care of all of those unobserved variables as well.